this video will totally change your approach to race car driving. So a lot of students keep asking me during coaching sessions what gears they should take or what lines they should take or where they should brake. And I never answer that question directly. What I do is I try to make themselves figure out the solution to these problems. And this is what this video is gonna be about. So I've been working with almost 2000 drivers since 2019 with racing technique. And my approach as a coach is to never tell the answer right away. This is because there are two types of drivers. One driver needs to mimic other drivers to find speed because they cannot figure it out themselves. And the other type of drivers are the benchmark type of drivers, the ones that figure out stuff themselves and become the reference for their teammates and find speed on their own. But what is the difference? Why can some people figure out stuff on their own and others have to mimic them? Why not you just figure out stuff yourself? If you don't know what approach I'm talking about, we're gonna divide them into guessing, versus testing. Guessing is when you don't really know what is the fastest way to take a corner and you try breaking in a specific place and you try using a specific gear and see if it works. Testing is almost the same thing, except that you're going to be a lot more methodical and really trying to feel the grip limit of the car on some specific ways to make sure that you validate your attempts of breaking references, for example. So let's say if you just try to guess your braking zones all the time and then pray for the best, that might be very interesting efficient just because you're spending so many laps and laps and laps and laps trying to find that speed by guessing and guessing and guessing. But the testing approach is finding as much grip as you can. And for me, that's my biggest obsession. And this is always the way I deal with the students who keep asking me what gear should I take? I'm gonna ask them, well, if you took that corner on third, for example, did you try to rotate the car as much as possible? And if they did, then they will be able to judge if that speed that they brought into the corner was correct or not. Basically, figuring out how much the car can turn is gonna be the essential method of judging what you do, judging your speeds, judging your lines, and having an eye on how much the car is turning like if you're getting a little bit of understeer, where does the car go while it's understeering on that speed, on that line? Or if it's oversteering and you're correcting, where does the car want to go at that speed? If you go into the corner at a given speed and you turn in, it's probably gonna take a very specific path from there. You cannot judge your speed or your approach if you're not on the limit. By the limit, I mean trying to get as much rotation as possible. And then after you get that rotation, now the car will go to a specific place because on the limit, it will go where it wants to go. You have a lot less control. And that's why that rotation that you can get at that moment is the tool that you have to be able to judge the initial conditions of the corner. What, what did you do on entry? How much speed did you carry? What gear did you use? So now by focusing on that rotation mid corner and focusing on what the car can do on the limit will allow you to answer those questions yourself. And I think that's why some drivers are able to figure out the lines, the speed, the gears so fast because they are testing what they tried with as much rotation as possible. And then they're kind of reverse engineering what they did on entry. And then they're able to judge that. So in just a few laps, they're already able to judge what they've done and what breaking references they chose on all those corners. And now in comparison, let's go back to the driver that guesses, right? The driver that guesses, keeps trying different gears and doesn't know exactly what, what they're testing mid corner. It's always gonna be like a guessing game. I think there are two big things about gearing. One is that if you choose to go in a specific gear, you have to downshift to that gear, which means you have to decelerate to that gear. So if you choose to do a corner on second gear, you have to decelerate a lot to be able to even downshift to get to that. And when you say, oh, I'm doing that corner on fourth, it's generally because you wanna carry enough speed to be on fourth gear. And when you say, no, 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 oh, wow, no, that's too fast, I'm going in third. Oh, well, that might mean that if you're downshifting to third, it's because you're decelerating more to be able to downshift to third. So that is one of the things that gear choices when you're learning a track are just the easiest way to figure out how much speed you're gonna be carrying on each corner. And that's what I done on the beginning when I was learning. It was like, I'm gonna determine specifically what gear I'm gonna use in each corner just because it helps me determine a range of speed. It's not gonna be ultra precise, but at least we can be like on the second gear and it can be second gear, high RPM, second gear, medium RPM. So that's a little bit more precise, but at least you're in that range that gives you an idea of how fast or how low the corner is. That's the first thing. The second thing for the gearing is that it can also make the car rotate more or less. So you can actually carry the same speed on third gear, low RPM. If you downshift to second, 
high RPM. It's like the same speed, but now at the same speed with different gears, the second gear with high RPM is making the car rotate a lot more. And the third gear with low RPM is gonna make the car understeer, rotate a lot less. That That's a second approach that's a little bit more advanced. If you know exactly what speed you're carrying, but you're choosing different gears, it's because you just want to choose which one is gonna give you the most rotation. And in that case, that helps a lot because remember, we're testing how much rotation the car is able to do. And in that case, you just wanna rotate as much as you can without losing the rear. If you feel that you're almost losing the rear, and doing micro corrections, that means that speed is gonna be pretty much the speed that the car can do on that line. If you're oversteering and you correct it and you still miss the apex, that means you're just too fast. The question that my students ask, like what gear should I take? Uh, okay, mm, I won't tell you, I know which one it is, but I want you to figure it out yourself. What speed do you wanna carry and how much rotation or engine braking do you want? That's the question I ask back to the student. Like I want them to be aware of the tools that they can have to decide on their own what gears they're gonna use. Because as a coach, I don't want my students to come back to me all the time. I want them to learn and to become autonomous. That is the main thing, like most coaches keep talking about like, you have to turn in at this place, you have to downshift at this place, you have to use that gear, brake. I do not do that, I hate that. Because what I really want is for you to figure things out on your own. And that's the biggest difference between guessing and testing. We want to get the tools to test. So if you're the person who is always having to mimic others to find speed, this is for you. This video is for you. Think about this. Do you want to be autonomous? Do you want to become the benchmark? Then start figuring out ways to test your grip. Figure out ways to validate your choices on corner entry by testing the rotation of the car by inducing more or less rotation and then being able to judge how much lateral grip the car has. Because that is so much more fun, really, to be able to get into any car that you want and to quickly get up to speed because you know the process of testing your grip. The way you're going to feel the rotation depends a lot from car to car and depends whether you're in a simulator, whether in real life. The most basic way is to see how much the world is rotating in relation to how much is steering. So if you're steering a lot and the world is not rotating that much and you see that the car is just not doing the line you want, you can already see the discrepancy between your steering and the rotation and you, you can easily feel that that's understeer. And if you turn the steering just a tiny bit and you quickly see the world rotating a, a lot more quickly, well, something's wrong, right? The car is pointing more than you, than you asked. So the visual way is definitely the most present that you can do in real life, that you can do in the simulator. In real life, you also have the feeling because you have the seat of pants, right? You can turn and feel that the entire body of the car is moving around and you're like even like moving your head to be able to, to keep going where you want to go. So that's a lot more obvious in real life. We can feel oversteer so obviously it's insane. So let's say you're getting a new combo right now. New car, new track. What you want to do is figure out the lines first through understeer. That's gonna be the safest way. So you literally try to force the front tires and get the car to understeer by not adding too much brakes. And like, if you feel the understeer starting to happen, the car kind of locks itself into a very predictable line. And because of that, you can judge more clearly that the speed matches the corner. And then after that, after you get used to that under shear, on the middle of the corner, on the lowest speed, which is the safest place to try that, you can try to ask for a little bit more rotation by using a little bit more engine braking and by using a little bit more tray braking mid corner. So you can try getting that extra rotation. And then now that you already have an idea of the speed for each corner, when you try to get a little bit more oversteer, you're gonna be in a safer spot because now the speed speeds are not gonna be too absurdly different. So figure out the lines through understeer first. And that's why it's so important to induce understeer, right? Like how can we even induce understeer? That's a totally different topic. But that's something for you to think about. Like I want to know how can I induce understeer? I would say the easiest way is to not trail brake. So you release the brakes completely and even maybe touch the throttle a little bit to create, this is what we call maintenance throttle where you accelerate just a tiny bit as you turn. Cause when you accelerate, you lift the front. So like boom, you're accelerating. Now the tires that need to rotate the car are here. The front tires are not in contact anymore with the track, at least not as much. And it kind of struggles to rotate. But if you, if you're like braking a little bit and you turn, then this end is like pushing more, there's more traction. And then it's able to rotate the car a lot more. So to generate understeer, just don't have the, the brakes on top of the front tires creating that. 
Instead, you want to accelerate a tiny bit. So oops, now you're like kind of disabling the, the grip of the front tires and then it just struggles a lot to turn. I think inducing understeer is very important. Just not a lot of trail braking. Also not a lot of downshifting because if you downshift very fast, you end up getting a lot of engine braking that might make the car oversteer. And if you're not aware of that, then you're like just spinning. You have no idea why. Well, don't downshift see what happens. The car is going to be lazy, the car is going to be understeery. And if you're on the right speed, if you're not carrying too much speed, you can understeer and still stay on track, which is what we want. We want, we don't want to carry too much speed and understeer into the wall. We want to brake and we want to induce that limit just to feel that first bit of limit on the front tires while being on a safe speed. Now there's one very important thing that I wrote about in my book, actually. Uh, it's going to be released in just a few months. Wait, let's see in the description. Which is the difference between two driving approaches, driving the line versus driving the car. Drive Driving the line is trying to use all the track on entry and use all the track mid corner and then use all the track on exit. So you're like doing the textbook line where you use all the track, but you can do that while not being on the limit. Let's say the ideal speed for that corner for a specific corner is 100K, but you're driving the line and you're in a safe position. You're not forcing the car. You're doing it at 90K. Well, you can actually do the corner still. So you can still drive in the line while being under the limit. Remember that because now we're going to compare it with the second approach, which is driving the car and driving the car when i talk about it is trying to feel that the car is on the limit of rotation limit of the lateral grip in that situation if you are at 90 kph on that same corner and you try to rotate as much as you can the car is actually going to rotate more than necessary and it's going to go towards the inside maybe even the inside grass of that corner because at 90k it can rotate more and now how can we match how can we compare those two things? Well, driving the line, if you're under the limit and you don't notice it, you're gonna just stay there. You're not gonna improve because you're gonna be able to do that corner and you're fine. On a subtle level, you can do it at 99 and still not notice that there is one kilometer per hour more that you can carry. In driving the car approach, if you're 98, you're already not using other track and you notice it. Oh, whoa, okay, the car can rotate more. That means I can carry one kilometer per hour more on the next corner. Well, not that specifically, but you got the idea. So my advice here, if you want to be the kind of driver who figures out stuff on their own, then you want to match those two. You want to know what the line is, not difficult, but you want to drive the car the most. The most you want to drive the car because you're going to be able to judge your speed. And that comes back to the beginning of the video. By asking for as much rotation as possible, we're able to judge the speed and we're able to test. We're able to judge the initial approach and we can find the limit a lot more quickly. You can see that I am obsessed with rotation because that's exactly how I think all my students find speed. I always judge rotation. It always comes back to having that as a goal and then figuring out other stuff like breaking references and gears and lines as a way to reach that rotation. And it, it, it always comes back, always, always, always. When you're talking about track usage, you're talking about car setup, you're talking about like driving approaches. It always comes back to, hey, can you rotate the car as much as you can without losing it and maintain that limit during the entire corner. Everything comes back to that. Try to rotate the car, try to drive the car, don't drive the line and you're gonna be faster. And to figure out all of the tools that you can to manage to generate or to induce more or induce less rotation. Well, I wrote an entire book about that. That's my obsession right now. The book should be out in one or two months. The link is in the description. This is going to be amazing. It's the love of my life right now. One year and a half writing and editing and sending it to people and then getting feedback from drivers, from professional drivers, and then sending it out to the company that's going to edit and publish it. So it's like, whoa, that's uh, I'm so excited about it. <laughs> and I really want to share it with you guys. It's going to be a very accessible price. So I hope you guys enjoy that. Y you can join the waiting list on my description. And by the way, do you know how many of these 50 sim racing mistakes you've been doing? Check out this video.